In today's video, we're going to take a look at two of the best-selling adventure vans and the big differences between each of them. We'll talk about price and we'll talk about some of my impressions. This is between the Storyteller Stealth Mode on the Mercedes 4x4 chassis versus the Winnebago Revel on the Mercedes 4x4 chassis. Let's jump inside the Storyteller first. The Storyteller is vastly different than the Revel right from the get-go coming inside the van. What you'll notice is it's very open feeling. You can see the back all the way from the front and vice versa. The walls have window spaces in them. This is a bed system that the bed lays down like this. There's two legs that go here. There's one right there. And then they go to the floor and lock in there. And so when you don't need the bed, it stows up like a Murphy bed. When it's time for bed, put the legs down and this becomes an entire bed area. What's kind of cool is the poles are permanently attached to the bed side and uh, now we do is unclip it back here and the bed rolls down. Well it doesn't really roll down it just stays down into the hole it goes like that and that's how this arranges. You kind of get the idea right so then this one does the same thing and this becomes an entire sleeping uh, surface right here. Um, I've heard from folks that own storytellers that travel in that this is uh, a very comfortable bed and what they often do is leave this down so it doubles as another seating area and then they move this portion up or down as needed. And then what that allows you to do is have a lot of garage space underneath the bed for all kinds of things including bikes and gear. Um, I've seen some pretty creative storage solutions. So this is the bed system in the Storyteller Overland. Let's look at the Revel bed system and see what the difference is there. Jumping into the Revel, we can see again, it's a very different layout just from stepping inside. Since we're looking at the bed, this is a very distinct bedroom, meaning you have dedicated space, some walls and separation here. The way the bed operates, you may know this, that it lifts up and down. And when it lifts up, it's electrically operated. It goes all the way to about right here. You can still operate the AC, but this is the sleeping mode here. So the bed mattress comes all the way down to these points right here. And you still have garage space, but you don't have quite the garage space that you did in the Storyteller. So you couldn't put bikes in here with the bed down. I think you can do that with the Storyteller. Now with the slide, uh, side uh, flare outs, you sleep this way, east to west. It does appear that the Storyteller bed is larger and a dedicated bedroom this is indeed. Hey, if we're meeting for the first time, howdy. My name is Scott. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Go Small, Live Large. All about the compact RV camper van travel experience. Let's look at this. This is a big distinction between the Revel and the Storyteller. And a very big difference is this is the bathroom. You have a dedicated space for toilet, shower, and if you're not going to use the toilet, you use these slatted shelves and they go on these racking pieces right here. So this becomes a storage closet. If you have wet clothes from your outdoor adventures, you can hang them here, let them dry. There is a vent here in the ceiling. There are vents here in the door to get circulation to dry those wet items. This is the toilet tissue holder. And there's another toilet tissue holder there. So this could hold shampoo, more TP, things of that nature. The toilet is, it swivels. Hard to do one-handed, but the toilet swivels. Wah, just a little bit so you get a little greater comfort in the on the stool. But this is a huge, huge difference between Storyteller and the Revel, and that has a dedicated toilet, five gallon cassette that you empty from the outside. Let's go see what the Storyteller offers for a toilet and a shower. In the Revel, this whole space here was consumed by the bathroom. In the Storyteller, this is also the bathroom. So the way they have this working here, is this is actually the shower pan 
and you stand in that, and then up here is what they call the halo shower system. Again, people that I've talked to say that this is a really nice shower system. It takes up this area here, and all your water goes into the drain, and that's pretty cool. What might even be cooler is I'm going to get a demo of this very unit from Storyteller headquarters, and I will be overnighting it in two nights, three days, and I'll actually shower using the system, so I'll give my input after I've tried it. But where's the toilet? Well, the toilet goes here, but where is it? Well, it's probably in the kit that comes with your new Storyteller, and it's a two and a half gallon portable toilet. We'll put the picture right here. It fits in there, and then what I've heard Storyteller people telling me is, for appropriate height, they put the toilet here, so you'd be kind of sitting here. Now, I'm a little taller than what it is, but, so this is what you'd be doing. Now, the question is, who's in the room with you? So there's not a lot of privacy. That's kind of the big point. And because it's a portable unit, we'll put the picture here of what it looks like. It's from Dometic. It's a nice little unit, kind of for emergency use only, is what I'm told, versus the Rebel toilet, which is a real toilet, uh, flushes water into the cassette, then you empty the cassette. Uh, you probably know that routine, right? Uh, so this is a pretty big distinction on Storyteller versus Rebel. Shower, pretty cool. Storing wet clothes. You could probably hang some things around here, but again, not a dedicated storage space for uh, drying out wet clothes. Let's look at the galley. I would say the galley is similar in size. Here you have a, a marine style sink. The faucet pops up like that. When not in use, this becomes a flat surface. Where's the cooktop? It's right here. Induction. Plug into the power right here, and that's how you get a meal cooked. What's cool is, if you don't want to do it on the inside, there is a table here where you can put this down like that, and then you do this outside. Here's an electrical outlet to power your cooktop. The refrigerator is here, isotherm, really high quality. Also here is a number of control system lights. And that kind of rounds out the galley with the exception of some storage. So here's drawer number one. <laughs> drawer number two. And drawer number three. This had the cooktop. The most narrow part of the van is right here between this seat and the galley. And I'm gonna say it's probably about 14 inches, maybe. It's not very wide at all. Rounding out the galley, you have a microwave here, a standard microwave, a light, again, the power. Really solid feeling. Let's go look at the Revel. Looking at the Revel galley, it's somewhat familiar, right? So we have the cook uh, surface up here. This is where your cooktop is. Here's your sink. This probably has a cover, so if you're not using the sink, this becomes one solid surface. There's no counter extension here either. This is where your fridge is, Nova Cool. Some control lights, some storage drawers. Two, two, and then three. That one's really deep, meaning tall. Uh, no microwave storage cabinet up above, and then some storage here. This would be your view, very similar again to the Storyteller. And then here's a table where you can uh, put this down and put your cooktop out here. <clears throat> Maybe even have chairs so you can dine outside and see this amazing view of, I don't know, the Grand Canyon. And that's how that works here. I see an outlet right here so you could power your uh, cooktop. What do you think so far? Pretty big differences. Um, again, just the feel of the cabin and the bathroom for sure is a huge deal. The next thing we're gonna look at is kind of the seating lounge table arrangement. This is the Rebels. So this is on a lagoon table. 
I stand corrected. It is not a lagoon table. It's a table on a pole. So you cannot adjust the height or the placement. It does swing around. The chairs do swing around, spin around. So you could have two people here very easily. One, two. This is on the smaller size. Let's see if we can demo that for you. So slipping in here, yeah, there's really only room for one person. Maybe it's two small kids. <clears throat> so that seat would have to be spun around and utilized to use this space at all. And again, it only goes this way. You can't really move it. I've before seen it have lagoon table. So I'm not sure if this is a, an improvement or a downgrade, but it's, it's high. It feels a little high to me, but, um, Definitely only one person can fit here and actually the pole leg is kind of in the way from scooting over any further. The head clearance here is not bad. <clears throat> I'm 5'10". Um, but man, if you're going to try and put another person in this seat here, they better be on the small size. Do have a window, which is nice. And there's a, a, a ram mount here that you can uh, use to put things in to hold like a iPad or something like that. Um, fit and finish is very nice. It's uh, this is plastic. It's it's quality plastic, um, and the cabinetry is you know made by Winnebago. They uh, like to talk about that. Let's go look at the table and seating situation in the Storyteller. In the Storyteller, uh, it's a very different situation. This is what is called the Groove Lounge. And what makes this kind of groovy is it's a seat or it's a bed. I'm going to demonstrate that for you in a second. But what we're talking about is kind of the dinette situation. So they're actually using a lagoon table, which is the mount is right there. And the table and pole are in the kit. I don't want to disturb that uh, for the customer. Let's do close this, though. Again, I appreciate La Mesa RV here in Albuquerque giving me access to this rig. Rigs. <laughs> okay, so let me... um. Put this down and see if we can uh, get a sense of how that would feel sitting at the table. All right, so plopping my rear into the seat right away, there's a giant difference. I can definitely have somebody sit here next to me. It would be on the snug side, but uh, you better be good friends, but you can do it. I don't think you could do it in the Revel. And because the Lagoon mount is right here, we have to use your imagination. I apologize. The table will come up here and they're t usually adjustable this way, and then they're adjustable this way. So again, you could utilize this seat, spin it around, but you could get three people around this table, because I've seen them, they're pretty good size. And again, one, two, three, for sure, or two people just sitting side by side at the table, very doable without spinning this around if you cannot be in a place or situation where you cannot spin your, your uh, chair around. So I would say this is pretty cool. The fit and finish is, is very different. This is cloth. It really feels well thought out, well engineered, uh, well manufactured. Big, stunning uh, window here. I would say a much better viewpoint than the, uh, than the Rebel. So what I thought would be fun now is convert the Groove Lounge into a bed. Now this is a pretty cool thing, and the Rebel can only sleep people in the bed in the back, so you really have no options unless you get some really fancy accessories, which a lot of Rebel people do. But let's do this uh, Groove Lounge. Let's convert it into a bed. So we're going to do first thing is just take this off and just kind of set it up front for right now. So there's a couple of handles here. One is right here. <clears throat> and you pull up and you continue to pull up until that goes all the way forward. There's actually a safe in here, which is pretty cool. And then this piece, you pull up on the handle and down on the piece. And then there's one more handle. You push down and you keep pushing until this lays flat. And that's how that thing works. It's pretty cool. You could definitely sleep an adult on there, no problemo. How comfortable it is, I don't know, let's see. <clears throat> Ooh, it is on the firm side for sure. And it's really flat, <laughs> but... Uh, it can be done, right? It's uh, pretty cool, actually. Um, but again, you could definitely get two people in bed and a third down here. So travel three and uh, actually maybe even four in four three-point seat belts 
and then sleep three, maybe four if you're really on the snuggly side. Rebel doesn't have that option on the sleeping thing. Although they do have an inflatable air mattress you can buy optional to put somebody in the cab. But uh, I've seen those and they look great for an eight-year-old kid. I'm not sure about a 48-year-old adult. Last thing we want to look at is the exterior. Um, while they're on the same exact chassis, there's some pretty big distinctions on the exterior. Stay to the end, we're going to do the pricing for you and put all the vehicle specs for both rigs from the manufacturer's website. So the Storyteller has a, the very familiar silhouette of, of the Sprinter, right? Same as the Rebel. These have the uh, BF Goodrich all-terrain K02 tires, the same tires that I put on my rig. It's got the uh, stylized Mercedes branded wheels, running board. This is their M-Power that allows you to connect something else so the rig can actually power another device like, I don't know, another van maybe. This is the 30 amp in. And a big distinction here is the ladder. So this comes from the factory. And I think this is a big distinction here because this comes with an installed roof deck that's aluminum. It clears the air conditioner, it clears the solar, it clears the vent. So a lot of folks like to take their Instagram pictures up here at sunset, getting their wine and cheese out. And that's what is very different on this. There's a built-in wind guard up front. And again, the ladder is on the side. It is permanent. You can't really take it off. So pressurized fresh water connection. <clears throat> These come with mole racks, I think they call them. So you put gear on here, you can attach it via bungee cord, or um, there's accessories that attach to this. This comes with, there's a step. Here's outlets, solar, and that kind of rounds out the exterior. It does have the awning. Just a really nice, clean, handsome van. Clean up front. Has a little bit of decal work here. But just very attractive from the outside. Let's go check out the Rebel. Looking at the Rebel, again, it's on the same chassis, but there are some big differences. Uh, this does not have the all-terrain tires, nor the fancier wheels. It does have a really long running board window. This is the cassette toilet door, so this opens up. This is where your cassette comes out in your toilet waste. A flare like the other. This is power in. There is no power out. That is kind of a storyteller thing. Back here, it does have a ladder, but it's kind of the removable kind where you put it up on these hooks, you see that? And then it goes around on the side of the rig. But there's no deck up on top. That's a big distinction, so if you want that is something you're gonna to have to add as an accessory. None of the molly panels. Doesn't have a step. The window here, this is just a little, not too perfection in my book, but nonetheless, a very attractive rig, very understated, big running board on this side. What a lot of folks do is they do van mods. Um, I've even done van mods to my Winnebago Travado to make it look like an adventure van, even though I rarely take it off-road because I'm more of an urban cowboy. So all of the, the decks and the, the gear carriers, all that stuff, that's really a personal preference. But I think uh, in the end, it's gonna boil down to sleeping capacity. Is a toilet permanent, real, important to you or not? And the quality of the build, and the mystique of the brand. That leads us to price. So this is the uh, window sticker from Winnebago. And again, this is a La Mesa RV. So it's $213,000 MSRP, Manufacturer Suggested Retail. So this is list price, we just saw that. They're discounting it here at La Mesa, $73,000 for 140 grand as the 
price point to start negotiations, right? Let's go look at the Storyteller. This is the Storyteller. This is the stealth mode. This is kind of their mid-tier of their uh, three models based on this Mercedes. So here's our MSRP, 266000 This is their list price after a discount, 188941 Trying to get out of the wind there. So it's a $77,000 discount. And the way it works with Storyteller, to my understanding, is there's really no negotiation that this is the price that customers pay. I'll verify that with the sales team, but uh, what you don't see is this minus this, and this is a negotiating point that every Storyteller sold in the country of this model, of this equipped uh, van, is priced at that. Hope you've enjoyed this video, just pointing out the obvious differences between the Storyteller Overland van and the Winnebago Revel, both one of the best-selling vans in the adventure van space. You might be asking yourself, why doesn't Scott have a Revel or a Storyteller? I don't have a Revel because that's actually where my journey started. It didn't have the floor plan that I needed for full-time travel. Why not Storyteller? It doesn't have a toilet. And that emergency use only toilet isn't how I roll. I enjoy full use of my toilet in a private room so even with friends or family rolling around with me, I have a private place to do my business. To me, that's super, super important. Now, if you're watching this, we are going to be demoing this very unit. You'll want to see my experience overnighting two nights, three days in the Storyteller Overland Stealth Mode, this same rig I'm demoing in uh, Denver in June. So you'll want to check out those videos. Till we see you soon, we like to say journey on and... Peace be with you. Thanks for watching.